This is Elaine Carhill for Spring 2022 Software Construction Assignment and my chosen topic is web scraping. What if you have a great research idea but cannot find a ready-made data set? Would you visit many sites and try to collect data in a spreadsheet? What if you don't have time or money for a survey or data collection? In business, interns or admin assistants have been tasked with manually gathering data in this site-by-site -site fashion. For instance, if you wanted to compare prices of golf clubs, you may go to Global Golf, the golf warehouse and Dick Sporting Goods. Web scraping simply looks at the document structure rather than the uh, human readable picture which you can see here by pressing f12 to view the source i've highlighted some elements relating to the price class for the clubs highlighted on the left so web scraping is simply a way to automate this browsing the http request is sent in your code and when you receive the response you can pass that and save it as XML, JSON or to a file or even configure a pipeline say to store in a, an Amazon cloud. Then it is available for you to use for data analysis, reporting or your own research. Now, the reason I chose to talk about web scraping or crawling is that as I started reading re research papers Myself, I came across this phase. Data was scraped from conference websites and thought I'd better find out how to do that. Twitter provides an API for you to search through tweets which are public by design. And for that reason, you will often see researchers use Twitter to mine social media, say to use in machine learning projects. On the right is an example of a commercial use that was in the Wall Street Journal last June. This clearly states web scraping is one of the company's research methods and used it to create a searchable database of medical sensor gadgets. This Facebook, now Meta, example reported in Wired shows that address book information was accessible and used in an unintended way. Called it a leak or a hack, but it was said to be web scraped data and in this case gave the technique a bad name. Now competitors may not like that you can easily scrape their sites, but they can also try and scrape yours. There is case law, but we hope that the academic users will not be prevented from web scraping public data for genuine ethical research. I chose to download a comprehensive legal guide to web scraping in the US from McCarthy Garber Law after reading the blog in the previous slide. This is a great resource if you need to find case examples. It also summarizes ways you can violate, violate the law and what is considered legal practice. So just a small sample here and note that copyright and trademark are examples of where you need to ensure you don't encroach. And you must not try to breach authentication or infringe trademarks and so on. So let's hope it stays uncomplicated for research purposes on data that is public. So how to get started. Beautiful Soup 4 is a Python library to extract data from the HTML files and help you parse, navigate and search. It supports the HTML parser included in Python standard library. See crummy.com for official docs and guides. Uh, this Tech with Tim four part tutorial has a lively presentation style that may help to get you started quickly. Um, you could use your student ID for LinkedIn Learning. They have many courses. You can see I did this one, Web Scraping with Python, in March. This is a follow along type class using Visual Studio Code and Python uh, with the Scrapey library. Uh, source code is included from GitHub. There is a good chance you have already taken a data science class and have Jupyter Notebooks installed. I use a Windows laptop so tend to use Jupyter Notebook 
books from Anaconda and just have myself a shortcut to run Python on the notebook. If we had more time I would do hands-on demos but with only 15 minutes I'm going to show some things I already have saved. Start with Beautiful Soup in Jupyter. Start with Beautiful Soup import request. Um, we assume you've you know, downloaded that and um, got that set up okay. Here I feed the response into a beautiful soup object and extract the HTML and here's the HTML parser in <coughs> excluded, included in Python standard library. Index file is on my hard drive as you can see here and this is a great way to learn and play around and get the syntax correct without worrying about uh, network errors so here uh, you can choose I've just chosen to print out the title which um, is ECU And here um, we've chosen to find all the paragraphs. These are the paragraph tags. Um, so that's straightforward. Now let's try and uh, request an, um, an actual site. And it <coughs> using a straightforward uh, request, get URL, we generate this security error. Now, uh, why would the hosting company uh, block your request? The host is suspicious about where the request came from, so we need to provide the user agent. This is simply done by going to your favorite website, press F12, refresh the page, and then under network, uh, pick one of the pages and then under the request headers headers request headers down at user down at the bottom um, copy this user agent information and you would simply paste that here and next then we make the request again with the passing in this headers information for the um, user agent and the request should then be successful and yes that returns the um, HTML that we requested um, and I've just printed it using the prettify so you can actually uh, see that and so that's a good uh, the basic concept of web scraping before we look at another library, I want to at least make you aware of sitemaps and robots text. So most sites have a robots text file, which uh, simply um, its most useful thing is this disallow list, which tells it tells your scraper um, where you can and cannot go on um, their site. Um, so partly for security and partly just to save server resources and so this is the irs.gov and lots of detail in that one and they won't all be that long now the sitemap is an xml file that lists the urls for a site now in this case um, the irs.gov is showing that they have 11 sitemaps because that is going to be a big site and usually you can just type sitemap.xml after the main um, URL uh, the same here with robots robots.txt um, if that doesn't show up you might have to do some investigation um, so here I already loaded up page one of that sitemap and you can see there are 5,000 URLs in the first page so that can get quite complex and that's one of the reasons you might want to use XPath um, when you to walk the document tree um, and 
but if that's the site you need for your research then uh, you'll you'll figure that out so here is the classic beginner site to practice scraping and take note here of this div class quote and small class author and span class text within that div which is the author and the famous quote so there you have steve martin and the quote there so this is an example of how to get those and in the interest of time i had to go ahead and um, already have um, scrapey installed and these files created but um, to get started you would simply go to the settings and under the projects name the python interpreter add search for scrapey uh, and install it from there that's straightforward and to um, cr then create this project when you've got the package installed you would simply type in the command line scrapey start project and then your project name and to create the actual files again you would type the scrapey command gen spider your file name and then the um, which the main website that you wanted to be your start URL for your scraping. So this example shows oh these side by side examples show where I've got to get the the quote text and the author from the quotes to scrape page. So this shows the CSS syntax and this is the XPath syntax. So for each quote in the div it is going to get the text and the author and of course you've imported scrape it at the top. The word spider gets added to whatever your file name is when you do gen spider so if you call it CSS spider then the class name will end up being CSS Spider Spider. So just go with whatever your organization's naming uh, conventions are. Um, and so just to prove something, uh, it works. Let's just quickly run this in the terminal. And you can see here we have some quote text and authors. And you get exactly the same results with both syntaxes. Now, of course, for this to be really useful, you want to be able to save your results to a file. So um, the key thing there is then you would have something like this. You would still run the spider, but this time you would have an output switch and a file name. Now this small o will append to the existing file and a capital O will give you a new one. Now, as you can see I've already got a CSV and a JSON file created. So let's just quickly make the XML version to complete the set and refresh the folder and there we have it okay so one thing you might need to do and you would do this for production sites is in fact save these file name and file format into your settings file because obviously you're not just typing into the terminal and this comes with a lot of um, information already set these are a lot of the defaults that you can uncomment and um, the key thing being that you don't want to overload somebody's system and be accused of denial of service or blow up your machine um, and also for the file in the items folder you can define a file structure so that you assign um, for each element assign them to your own field name especially if you want you know everything to look nice in a spreadsheet 
So, um, just one one quick thing I did want to mention. How I had a lot of trouble getting the syntax for this last one. So you can see in the end I had to do some research and I've ended up with a mix of CSS and XPath in the same request. So that that might well be a useful tip for um, to remember for in the future. And just to uh, finish up on time, um, here is um, a site that might help you get a refresher on XPath. Um, it's a Zite blog. They are the uh, main sponsor of uh, Scrapey. And in, so this was just an introduction to web scraping, um, showing CSS and XPath example, examples in Jupyter and PyCharm using Beautiful Soup and Scrapey. So there are many tools out there for you to collect data for your research as a student. Just be aware of privacy issues and don't forget to see if a company or organisation already provides an API like the one Twitter has before resorting to building your own web scraper. So thank you for watching. I hope it was informative.